Good morning, Life Point Church. How are you doing this morning? All those online this morning, it's good to have you with us. And if you are visiting today, if we consider you our guest, and if you're online for the first time, we just want to say welcome to our church family. And uh, we look forward to, to continuing today's service by looking at God's Word. How many brought your Bibles this morning? I hope you did. I, that is so important for us as a people that we bring God's word uh, to with us because this is really what we calibrate our life to. We don't calibrate to what I think is right. We don't calibrate it to, to what you think is right or what the culture think is, thinks is right. We calibrate our life to God's word because it is absolute truth, right? Absolute truth just means truth that works in any time, any season, any culture, any place, anywhere. There are truths that, that work in certain cultures, and there are truths that don't work in certain cultures. But absolute truth works in any culture, in any time frame, in any part of history. That's God's word, and that's why we calibrate our life to it, among other reasons. Uh, t- we are in a, a series of focusing on prayer. We believe strongly that God is directing uh, his people to, to, to not just to um, know that we should pray, but to actually have an understanding that, that I believe the Lord is saying, I want you to dismantle all the religious trappings around prayer that has kept you from having a consistent life of talking with me, because that's what prayer initially is. It's, um, at its basics, it, it is about having a conversation with God not just a monologue where you're just the only one talking, but a dialogue to where we're actually learning to know and to hear his voice, to sense his presence, to know his gentle uh, 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 nudges and direction for our life. And if prayer is difficult for you, then you're in good company. Can I hear an amen? amen? Because prayer is one of the most challenging things for most of us as Christians to do on a real regular basis. Many of us struggle to talk and to walk with God on a daily basis, but but there's no better example to follow in every area of our life than the life of Jesus. And so we are looking at the personal prayer life of Jesus as we begin, as we evaluate where are we at with a consistent time of having a conversation with God, of, of, of learning, of getting past all the religious trappings and actually having conversations and learning his voice. And the life of Jesus is riddled with prayer. He does so many amazing things. He says so many amazing things that we can easily lose sight of his prayer life. His prayer life actually can get lost in, in, in all the things that, the miraculous things that he, that he did and, and is doing. And so if, if prayer was a major part of Jesus' life, how many think it should be a major part of our life? It really should, because that's who we're modeling our life after. That's who we want our children to model their life after. And so he had a, a, a prayer life, and so should we. And we've been learning from his life of prayer. We got a glimpse of how different Jesus' life of prayer is than the religious people, Right? The religious people of that day, they prayed in the public. Why? Because they wanted to be noticed. They wanted to be around people. But Jesus prayed in private. Why? Because he wanted to be alone with the Father. It didn't matter if people saw him. He actually would get away to to quiet and solitary places we've been learning, to get away uh, just to be with God. And um, we don't have a whole lot of details of when he would get away, but today we're going to look at a passage of Scripture that actually gives us details of what it looks like and looked like when Jesus got away with the Father and began to to live uh, or or begin to talk to him. And I I just want to encourage you, that's where prayer must start for you and I. It's got to start in that place of relationship, of just wanting to know God just wanting to be in his presence. It's got to start in that place where we are able to call God into our life. And that's what the power of prayer is, is to be able to call him into our life, to call him into our circumstances, to have him walk with us and to, and to include him in the, in the conversation that's going on all day long in our lives. Whether it's conversation that we're having with ourselves up in our head, or the conversations that we're having with people around us, including him in it, is such a strategic move in making prayer more than just a religious activity. 
that he's with us all the time, and so why would we dare ignore him? Well, why, why would we treat him like, like he's just not there when he's promised, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you until the end of time, he declares. And so that's why we're looking at prayer. And, and the time is now to increase both our understanding and our familiar, familiarity with prayer, the use of prayer. Today I want us to look at, if you'll turn to Mark chapter 14 this morning, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And uh, this, is, this is the New Living Translation. If you don't have a Bible, if you're, if you're wondering what Bible to read and you don't have one or, or you would like a, a Bible, these, these are our Bibles that we give out. You can get them at the point. But I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation, which uh, I believe is one of the, 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 the most understandable translations that you can have right now. There are a lot of ones out there. But I just want to offer this to you. Uh, in Mark chapter 14, um, uh, we're going to look at and learn from Jesus what, his, what would become to be his last night on the planet. And if you, knew, if you knew that tonight was your last night on the planet, what would you spend it doing? I just want to ask that to you. Because what Jesus did on the last night of his life is he spent time with the ones that were closest to him, and he prayed. That's the place of prayer in Jesus' life. And so as we look at his, what would become to be his last moments or hours on the planet before he'd be arrested and, and tried, in Mark chapter 14, he's, he, it, 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 in the context of this chapter, he is, he is having the last supper with those of his disciples who are closest to him. And he's talking to them about this new covenant, right? And then in Mark chapter 14, verse 32, I want, I want to begin to read there with you, and I'm going to read the passage that we're going to be unpacking today. And it says, They went to the olive grove called Gethsemane. Gethsemane. So they were up in the upper room. They had just got done finishing uh, this last supper. And it says in uh, Mark chapter 14 that they sang a hymn, and then, that, and then they went out to the Mount of Olives. And, they, and it picks up in verse 32 that they went to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and Jesus said, sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. And he told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. If there is ever a portion of Jesus' life where we see his humanity, it's here. He went on a little farther and fell on the ground and he prayed that if it were possible that this awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. He says, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want, what your, I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned and he found the disciples asleep and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? And I want you to pay attention to this verse right here. And he says something that's very important for today's message. Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Let's pray. Father God, I'm asking you through the power of your spirit and the power of your word that you would speak to every man, woman, boy, and girl here today. God, I pray that there would be revelation knowledge for each one of us. Lord, no matter how long we've known you, no matter if we're here today or online and we're still making a decision of whether we even believe in you, God, today I pray that there would be such revelation and understanding that it's undeniable that we've heard from you. Lord, you know the time and history we are living in. And God, we believe wholeheartedly that you are calling us once again to pray. So Lord, Give us understanding today, far beyond the wisdom of a, of a man or a woman. We need your wisdom. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. Here we have an account of what quite possibly is the last final time or prayer on earth. And if you and I would just take time to examine this, this prayer right here, it, it holds so much. I'm not going to take a time to really dive into all of it. I'm going to focus on... Uh, the verse 38. 
But if we would take time just to study this portion of Scripture that I just read, you and I would, would see not only the personal prayer life of Jesus that up to this time hadn't been disclosed up in, because he, it always says that Jesus would get away early in the morning or he would pray through the night and, and that's all we got. But now we're seeing, we're seeing exactly what uh, it looked like when Jesus got alone with the Father. You see, Gethsemane, this, this, this olive grove, was a common place for Jesus to go to. It was one of those places that he would steal away to alone. And so this was a very familiar place for Jesus to go to. And this time he brings his disciples with him because he understands that a lot of things are about to happen, are pivotal, very strategic things that they need to see and that they need to learn. And I believe that he brought them with him in this time of prayer because he wanted them to see a very important gift or key to facing battles in their life every day. And in verse 38, he, he, he switches gears. He, he first asks them, hey, would you please watch with me? Would you please, would you, would you please stay watch with me? Because he knew that he was going to be arrested, right? right? He, he brought all his disciples. He left a, a, a lot of them uh, just sitting there saying, hey, I'm going to go pray. You guys wait here. And then he took three of his closest disciples away further down into the garden. And he said, and he began to do what? He began to bear his soul. You see, if you were just to study that, it, it, when you're going through difficult times and, and you're, how do you navigate that, you can, you can look at the life of Jesus because undoubtedly this was one, if not the greatest, the most difficult day of his life. Knowing everything that he knew about what was taking place still in the natural, he was facing and he was struggling and he, he took three close friends with him and said, man, I need you to watch because right now I'm in trouble. All of us need a few people who are that close to us when we say, I'm in trouble. It's not for everybody. You don't tell the masses, but you have one or two or three people that are those two or three o'clock a.m. people, right? Jesus, you, you, we could study this. We could study how, how Jesus uh, not, not only asked them to pray, but w the, the, the account goes that he came back and they were sleeping. They, they let him down, right? And I know that at times our closest friends can let us down at times. That it, it's one of those things that, that you'll say, hey, I'll, I'll be praying for you, and you really don't, right? Have, have you ever done that to somebody? I'll be praying for you, and you just don't do it. Well, that's kind of the equivalent here. He's like, I need you to come away with me. I need you to pray with me but then they fell asleep, you know? It's kind of like, oh. But so Jesus shifts gears after he comes back the third time, or after the, actually the first time he comes back and as they're sleeping, he recognizes that, that they just don't have the ability. They're tired. They don't, have a, they don't have a clear understanding of what is about to take place, but he does. And so he shifts gears and he says, I wanna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a very important truth that I've been living in, Jesus would say, that when I go away to pray, the reason why I go away to pray is because of this reason. Not only do I want communion with the Father, but it's imperative that to watch and pray is the key to deal with temptations in our life. We all wonder why Jesus was so able. Of course, he was fully God. He was a perfect uh, human being, a perfect man, but he was still human, we wonder how he, he, he lived the life that he lived with temptations, and he says that he, was, that he faced every temptation that you and I faced, yet he was without sin. And what he's disclosing here is very important for you and I. And I believe, for me personally, it was one of the greatest motivations to pursue a consistent time with God, a consistent time of talking and walking with him, because I was and I am a mess. And I need his strength to face the temptations of my life. And he clearly teaches them, hey, okay, forget everything else I just said. This is what is, it's about to, and I don't want to say hit the fan because that's not really nice to say in church, is it? <laughs> it's about to go to hell in the hand, but well, that's not really nice either. It's just about to fall apart. You have no clue about what's to happen. So, for, so now I just need you to, to keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. 
For your spirit is willing, Jesus says, but your body is weak. I love what the message says. It says that he came back and found them asleep, sound asleep. And he said to them, Simon, you went to sleep on me. Can't you just stick it out a little bit longer? And then verse 38 in the message says, stay alert, be in prayer, so you don't enter the danger zone without even knowing it. Don't be so naive. Part of you is eager, ready for anything in God, but another part is a lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. I love that. I love that translation of that passage. You see, Jesus lets us in on some very important truths for our lives, and we've been learning about that, but but the writer gives us this, and I just want to make this point this morning. The way we handle battles in our life, the way we live a life prepared for the things that we can't see, that that are out of our control, comes through a life of watching and praying. Of watching and praying. That is the power of prayer. That is the motivation that if you're like me, and you've struggled with this or that, or you've lived this way, and, and you're trying to break free from it, and it just seems like, you know, you, you, everything's going great until you leave the house, or until you get out of bed, right? <laughs> everything's going fine, man. You're, 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 you're conqueror, but then you walk out the door, and everything starts to be everything that's happening around you is out of your control and you have a hard time controlling what's going on inside of you. Jesus is telling this group of of men here, I want you to I want you to watch and I want you to pray not for me anymore, but for yourselves. You see, this was a key to Jesus' life of of living uh, in 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 victory over temptation is his prayer life. He spent time with a father And I believe that when we pray, God prepares us for the day of head. I don't know if you've ever prayed and you feel like your prayers are not going any further than the ceiling of wherever you're at. It feels like it's just emptiness. It feels like it's worthless. It feels like it's doing no good. You're just talking to yourself. Friends, I can tell you right now, when you and I take time to get alone with God, and talk with him in a place where we can be honest and open, a place where we can actually carry on a conversation audibly with him. When we do that, you may feel like nothing is happening. Can I tell you, there is a truth that Jesus is uh, unveiling and unraveling right here that he is saying, when you do that, it prepares you for what's about to happen today. You have no clue about what's going to happen. But when we spend time in prayer... It does a couple of things. Number one, it keeps us alert. It keeps us um, aware because that's the word, what the word watch means here is the word watch, it actually means to keep watching. He's saying, I want you to keep watching and pray so that you don't fall into temptation. Uh, I, I love that Jesus once again is, is exhorting his disciples to watch and pray and then Jesus adds that, that, that you'll, you're not going to fall into temptation. So the formula for conquering temptation, I'll say it again, is to stay alert and to pray. Because that's what the word watch means, is to stay alert, to stay aware. Jesus shows that no matter how willing we are to do the right thing in our spirit, our human body is weak. That's what he was saying, your spirit's willing, but, but, your, spirit, but your flesh is weak. And so that's why he's saying, I, I, you, you need to watch and pray because powerful things happen when you do that. Prayer prepares us for the battles of the day. Prayer prepares us for the things we cannot control. Prayer prepares us for the temptations that we will face in our life. I have have experienced this in my own life, and many of you know uh, a lot of my hangouts, a lot of my habits that, that God has walked me through and is walking me through. And I can tell you wholeheartedly that the first place that God called me to after I, I gave my life to Jesus was not the ministry, was not to reading the Bible, as important as that is for me personally. He called me to prayer. He called me to prayer. When I was still on my way to, to going in the Air Force and flying, it, when I, that, that still was my track. He said, Mike, I, I'm just calling you to, to pray. I'm calling you to be with me. I'm calling you to spend time with me. 
and that has changed everything in my life. Prayer changes our hearts. Prayer prepares and strengthens us for what is about to happen. I just want to quickly unpack this word watch. Uh, I want to quickly unpack it because uh, Jesus was saying, keep watching and pray. It's a continuous action. It's not something that we just do in the morning and then we, 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 we put it off to the side. There's this, there's this call through God's word to pray unceasingly, right? First Thessalonians, right? To pray unceasingly. We all think, oh my gosh, that's just way over the top, right? There, there's a call to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, right? Everything is with prayer. It says, don't worry about anything, pray about everything, right? It, it's all throughout God's word of calling us to be in this continuous place where we're in that that place of watching and being alert in prayer or talking to God, having a conversation with God, including Him in the conversation and in the decisions of our life, that's where we, God begins to prepare us. We see, uh, if, if you know the rest of the story, we see that the disciples who fell asleep, uh, when they came to arrest Jesus, what happened? Well, we know that Peter took things into his own hands, right? He, he reacted, right? We see that not only did Peter react and take a sword and cut off one of the, the servant's ears of the, of the guards, right? But he actually ended up denying Jesus. And the rest of the disciples did what? They ran. They ran away. We see that that's what Jesus was foreseeing. He was like, it, it, it's, it's coming down. It's happening. And I want you to keep watching and praying because it's going to get real ugly in just a few moments, and I need you to be prepared for this. We see the difference between Jesus who prayed and those who slept, right? Jesus picked the ear up of the servant and healed him. I mean, those kind of... Re responses are not reactions. They're a response to something that has been, pre been prepared beforehand in the heart of a person, right? You know, they every, had every right to leave the ear on the ground and say, hey, let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> Don't mess with me. But he didn't. I love it because Jesus had a habit of prayer. And very quickly, we talk about keep watching, keep praying. Jesus says he went to Gethsemane. This was something that he did. It was a habit. And so when this was a habit in every part of his life, it, it's just what he did morning, uh, in the evening. It was Jesus just got away, right? So when trouble hit, I asked you earlier, if this was the last day on the planet for you, what would you spend your night doing knowing that you weren't going to wake up again? What Jesus did, his response was he went to prayer. I don't know if I would do that. Can I just be honest with you? You guys are so holy, but I'm not. I would, I mean, if I asked myself that question honestly, if the Sunday school answer was there, I would say absolutely, I'd be praying. But I'd be like, I want to spend time with my family, which was good, which would be good, right? And I, I just want to maybe spend time going to the ocean. I just want to, I mean, all these things that we'd want to do. It, it, can you relate to that? But Jesus didn't. Why? Because there was this place that prayer it, it held in his life that was a habit. How many have ever played sports? How many have ever been coached by your coach to say that you, you're going to play like you what? You're going to play like you practice. And so what that basically meant was that, that whatever you do in practice, you know, even though it's not the game, if you just do a half-hearted effort, that's how you're actually going to play in the game. Why? Because that's where you it, practice is where you prepare for the conflict. Right. The practice in, in sports is where you, is where you, is where muscle memory starts to happen, right? But if we don't practice, if we don't practice as if we were in the battle, then when the battle comes, how many know that we're not going to respond. We're, there's muscle memory, memory that, that we respond with, whether it's good, bad, right, or wrong. So my question to myself and you is, what is your muscle memory when it comes to adversity? 
What is your muscle memory, spiritually speaking, when you're giving, when, when the doctor's message is, is, is anything but good? You see, that, that, that's where Jesus was at. His muscle memory is, I'm going to go pray. I'm going to be with my father. Because I know that I'm about to face an, adver- a, a, an adversity like I've never faced. In the, and that's, you hear his heart. He's, this, he's like, I'm vexed. I'm in the darkest place of my life. This is the son of God. Admitting in this moment. And where he runs to is prayer. He brings people with him. Surround me. These are, the, these are the steps for your life and my life when we are not just in the throes of difficult situations, but every day that there would be a, a habit that would... And that's what, that's, that's what the call of the Spirit is all about right now to his people. Because we struggle with taking time with God, with, with having a, a, a dialogue, not just a monologue, not just, not just, here's all my stuff, God, and then we leave and we, and we go on our way. This is what the Spirit of God is saying. I want you to begin and, and to even fortify a, a relationship with me through prayer. And so for, for those of us that have a hard, a hard time understanding prayer, that it's just so hard and we don't know the right words and we don't, we, we've never been taught and, and our lives are a mess and our past condemns us and so we, we feel like we don't even deserve to be able to talk to him. Jesus is saying, it is the key to your victory. No matter who you are. Jesus is saying, starting next week, we're going to look at how to pray. We're, we're going to learn how to, we're going to have an under, we're going to learn, we're going to have a, a deeper understanding of, of what does it look like to have a conversation with God? What, if, if you're here and you struggle with that, if you're online and, and, and prayer is hard for you, join the crowd. There's a lot of us in that crowd, but Jesus taught on prayer a lot. And we're going to look at now, how do I pray? And so I hope that brings hope to you as we look at that. But right now, the greatest motivation, I don't know if you're like me, is that I want to live like Jesus. I want to get free from the things that hold me back and have held me back. I want to, I want to stop living in the past and, and what my identity was, and I want to begin to live in the identity that Christ has given to me. That does not happen just because I become a Christian. That happens because I spend time in his presence, and he prepares me. He makes me alert. This, this word watch is so powerful. Jesus had a habit of watching. He had a habit of praying. That's why he was prepared. That's why no matter what situation he walked into, he was prepared. I, I love it because when you think about your prayer life and, 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 and your muscle memory in that way, you know, does everybody know what muscle memory is? It's when you've learned something so well that you, don't, you can do it without even thinking about it. If you ever watch an accountant on one of those 10 keys or whatever those things are, I don't get it. You ever see the, the people with, you know, knives, you know, and they're like talking, I'm like, I would have no fingers left. It would just be gone. It's muscle memory, right? You see somebody playing sports and, the, and their technique playing golf or swinging a baseball bat or, or whatever, they've done it so much that it's muscle memory and, and everything works together and, and they, they just do incredible things. Well, why? Because they practiced. It wasn't just when they showed up for the game like I do when I show up for a softball game. I don't, we don't practice during the week. We just show up and hope we don't pull a muscle. <laughs> hope we don't die that day. You've got to get up and go to work the next day, right? Keep watching. The most difficult days in our life, sometimes we don't know that they're coming today. We don't know. You see, the Bible, if we understand this thing of watching, this thing of being alert, this thing of being aware, it's kind of like a picture of of, um, one picture, uh, if you look at it in the Greek, this word watch, be alert, be aware. Uh, be awake. The word watch in the Greek there actually means to have been uh, um, woken back up. After you've been asleep, somebody wakes you up. It's to be awakened. 
Right? That's one part of that word. The other part is to be alert and aware. And, and the picture that it gives is a picture of a, a centurion, a, 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 a soldier on guard. You know, and, and while, while the rest of the platoon, while the rest of the flight rests, they're counting on a guard, right, to, to guard the perimeters, right? And, and, and how many know that, that if that guard were to fall asleep, what would happen or what could happen? All right. The enemy can come in, right? And unaware. He's a picture of watching and praying is the, the ability to stand guard. That's why prayer is so powerful because when you pray, even though you don't feel like it's making a, a, a bit of difference, you're standing guard. You're being alert. The, the, the Spirit of God, the presence of God keeps you alert. He shows you things he makes you aware of things and you don't even know it's happening until you get into your day, until you get into your month and all of a sudden things are happening and you're responding with wisdom or you're responding with courage or, or you're responding with hope instead of the other way. You wonder, I don't know where that came from. It, it, it comes from those moments alone with him where you're, you're praying and he keeps you alert. How many know we have an enemy? The Bible's very clear about this. It says we have an enemy who roams around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour, right? We, he, 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 Jesus looked at Peter and said, the enemy wants to sift you like wheat, Peter. We have an enemy, and this thing of watching and praying, this motivation to engage a prayer life with Jesus, with God the Father, is knowing that when we do not it's the equivalent of falling asleep on your watch for your own personal life because when we fall asleep spiritually, when we fall asleep in this area of our life, we, we allow the enemy access. There's scripture, there's parable after parable. Jesus told stories about what the kingdom of heaven was like. One of the parables was, was, uh, was about a, a landowner that planted seed, and it says, while men slept, the enemy came in and sowed seeds of weeds. Right? Remember that? So the whole thing was watch. The whole, the whole thing about the parable was watch. Another one about ten virgins. Five were wise, five were not. Five kept the oil in their lamp and they kept watch. They all slept, but for some reason, those five who kept oil in their lamp, they were watching. And the ones that didn't, it says that, 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 they, that, they, that they had fallen asleep, right? It's, it's throughout Jesus' teaching, this thing of watching, of being ready. He tells another parable that no one knows the day or the hour when the Lord will return. It will come like a what? A thief in the night. It says, if the owner of the house would have known the time when the thief was coming, he would have what? He would have stayed awake. He would have been alert. He would have been watching. It's throughout the word. It's throughout God's message to us. He's saying, I want you to stay alert. And the way you do that is you spend time with me. You pray. Get alone with me. Because I want to fill you with strength. I want to prepare you because I know what's going to happen an hour from now. I know what's going to happen eight hours from now. I know what you're going to face at work and you have no clue, but if you will spend time with me, I will prepare you. Like Jesus says, watch and pray so you don't fall in temptation. Your, your, your spirit is so willing, but your flesh is weak. That just means when everything goes wrong, Spirit is wanting to do it, but unless we've watched and prayed, the spirit, I mean the flesh, reacts instead of responds. Good, amen. We have an enemy. The other picture of this word watch is falling asleep at the wheel. The, the, the first thing is this thing of standing guard, of being alert and aware. But the second picture of this word in the Greek actually has connotations to falling asleep at the wheel. And you and I both know, if you've driven any length of time, that there are times that it's so hard to stay awake while we're driving. And if you've watched Mr. Bean goes to Monte Carlo or whatever, you know, he put two, we do everything we can to stay awake in those moments, right? 
If I were to ask you what, do you, what have you done to stay awake on a trip, I bet I'd get some pretty funny things. All right? I, I could think of some pretty funny movies of, but how many know that it's not a funny thing when somebody falls asleep at the wheel? Right? And this thing of Jesus talking to them, he's saying, watch and pray because you're going to need you're going to need my direction. You're going to need to know what to do. And when we, when, we, when, we, when we don't have a life of this sense of understanding what Jesus was teaching here, of watching and praying so that we don't fall into temptation, it's the equivalent of just falling asleep at the wheel and going, ah, that's all right. That's not a big deal. There's guardrails. <laughs> Hope I hit one. I mean, it, it's the same. We wouldn't do that. We would do everything we could to stay awake. And then if it was impossible, we'd end up going, I just got to pull over. Why? Because it's important to stay awake. It's important to stay alert. And then you add the point of when you're on guard and when you're the one at the wheel, if you're hauling people, the responsibility that we have to, to watch and to pray and to stay alert increases, doesn't it? The weight of being a parent or a grandparent or, or someone that is carrying that load. This morning, as, as we look at this very important truth from Jesus, prayer is so powerful. And I, and I, and I know that the call of God upon prayer right now is so strong that these messages are as if you were heading into battle. And I've said this before, and I, it's hard for me to articulate it, but in order to, to not just survive the days of head, the, 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 in order to thrive, in order to, to have victory, in order to lead in the days ahead, it's going to come from a people who, who, are, who are with God, who are spending time with Him. It's as if, in, 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 in military terms, uh, if you're in the military and you use a, a, a rifle for your weapon, that's your main job as an infantry or something like that, you can take that gun apart frontwards, backwards, in your sleep, blindfolded, you can do it. Why? Because this is what is going to protect you. It's what's going to save your life. This is the this is the message what we're sensing in the spirit that prayer is that weapon. Prayer is that thing that God is saying, I need you to do something. I need you to look at your schedules. I need you to look at everything that you're involved in right now, everything that's sucking the life out of you and, and keeping you from being able to get alone with me because you're so worn out, you're so busy. God is saying, it's time to look at your schedules. It's time to go, God, I need to, I need to change my agenda. I need, he's saying, I need you to do that. There's too many things right now that are, that are happening and are going to happen that, that emulates what happened in the garden. And we feel that. We, Jeremy talked about the fear of things right now. We're a nation of fear. When the people of God, when you and I as followers of Jesus do not watch and pray, when we don't have that time of getting alone with him, of, of spending time in intimacy with him, of, of learning how to pray and learning how to talk to him, including him in, in our conversations, including him in our ideas, and including him in our, what we think our direction is, just including him every day of our life. When that doesn't happen, then when things go really bad, our, our muscle memory is not to run to prayer. Our muscle memory is to run to fear. Our muscle memory is to run to a credit card because the, the money will fix it. We can just, we can just buy our way out of it. I, I know that all too well. I've learned the hard way about doing stuff like that, knowing that my muscle memory is first to take things into my own hands. Or my muscle memory might be to run or to avoid, right? I mean, this is what's at stake. And when you, as a follower of Jesus, when me as a follower of Jesus, do not have this watching and praying, understanding the power of the motivation of it that causes us to do whatever it takes to our schedules, to make sure that we are spending time with him. 
It's the equivalent of falling asleep at the wheel and doing nothing about it. It's the equivalent of falling asleep while you're on your watch. When the people of God don't pray, a nation suffers. We are the watchmen. We are the body of Christ on the planet. And when we are not a praying people, it opens the door. There's no alertness. There's no awareness. We, we wonder what's going on. Is Jesus, oh my gosh, we're, it's going, yeah, we're like, ah! There is no way that we should be in that position. There's no way I should be in that position. Not if I've been watching and praying. Because that's what prepares me for the battles. Because I don't have control over every battle. I don't have control over everything that happens to me. So this morning, I just, I just want to encourage you, please, do whatever it takes to look at your calendar and your schedule. Ask the Lord, God, help me. Help me to spend time with you. Help me to cut things out. And there's nothing in our schedule seemingly to us that is expendable. It's, it's kids and it's work and it's life. That's exactly what the enemy wants. He doesn't want you to watch. He doesn't want you to pray. Why? Because then you won't be alert. You're not going to be aware. And he just creeps in unaware and he plants things. And he does things that we don't even have a clue. Why is, that, why is this happening? And whatever it takes, can we just decide that, that we're going to be a people, that I'm going to be a Can we just first decide personally, God, I'm going to be a person who spends time with you. I'm going to be a person that fights through all the, all the complications of a prayer life and, and I can't see you, I can't hear you, I can't, so it's just dead to me. I'm going to fight, push past that. I'm going to press into your presence, God. Can we decide as a church that we are going to be a church who prays? That we're going to be a church that depends so much on prayer that a monthly prayer meeting is our most attended service. But it takes us doing it together. It's, so I, I just I want to encourage you today. Jesus gave us a very clear gift and key to fight the battles of our day, to fight the temptations in our life. And if we will just take him at his word and just start somewhere, somehow, there is absolutely no condemnation here because it's the cry of the Father's heart for relationship, not obligation, not ritual religious duties. This is not what that is. As a matter of fact, that's what we have to get rid of because that's what the religious people of Jesus' day did. And that's why the disciples said, teach us to pray. They've been taught to pray all their life. They were Jews. But they saw something different in him. They saw a relationship with the Father that they wanted and they knew was connected somehow. He's always gone at night. He's up early in the morning. He is just, he, and he comes back and he says, you, 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 and you, you 12, you're apostle. And he just makes all these incredible decisions and he knows that you can feed 5,000 plus people with a happy meal. I mean, he just knows this stuff. He doesn't even bat an eye. And everybody else is like, oh, you know. Let's pray. Father God, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus the power of your spirit. And I ask you to help us, Lord. You know, you know many of us here, God, prayer is our lifeline. We, we have such intimate, personal relationship with you. God, I pray that for those who are in that spot, that it would become even more sweet, that, that it would become even more defined. It would become even more revelatory, God. For those of us, God, who struggle for those of us that are so busy, for those of us that has been relegated to a, a day of the week or, uh, or something that we do just before a meal or at bedtime, God, those things are powerful. 
But if it's the only thing, if it's the only time, God, I pray for those of us that wrestle with this, that there would be a transformation in our prayer life, in our, in our time with you. God, help us to find our voice with you. Help us to find, help us to articulate our hearts to you. Help us to include you today and this week in, in just everything that we're doing, God. Help us to just to, to ask you, hey, God, I've got this idea. What do you think? Of, God, I'm thinking about doing this. God, what do you think I should do? I, I really feel like I want to do that. God, I pray that we would just include you so that when something of real significant happens, it's so natural to run into your presence. It's so natural to grab a, a couple of, of friends and say, man, I, I, I need you right now to stand with me. God, I pray today that you would help us to be a church that prays. I mean, that, not, that, I mean, that really depends on prayer. Help us, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you'd prepare us as we pray for the battles and the struggles that we're going to deal with. I pray that we would have wisdom, we would have understanding because of those moments with you. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, we say yes to you. Yes, Lord, we want to spend more time with you. Yes, God, we want to clear our calendars. Help us, Lord, to do that. With every head bowed and every eyes closed as you are here today. If you are here you've never accepted Jesus and everything I'm saying is just so weird because you're, I'm talking like you can have a relationship with God. You can actually hear his voice and I'm telling you, you can. He is that personal. He is the most relational being in existence today. And if you would like to have a relationship restored with God, it starts with accepting his son who gave his life to take everything that has separated you and me from God, and he took it and he nailed it to the cross, and, and now you are free to choose to be with the Father, to have a relationship with him. But it all starts with Jesus. And you can today ask him to be your Savior. Ask him to be your Lord. You can freely admit that you've been wrong and you've been living life on your own terms and it's gotten you nowhere but trouble and you need him today. Have a conversation with him right now. Ask him into your heart. Turn your life over to him. Be all in. If you're here this morning and you're like me, you've been a Christian a long time. How's your muscle memory when it comes to prayer? What are you doing to stay alert and aware? What are you doing? What do you have in place that when you've fallen asleep, God can awake you? He can stir you because we all fall asleep at times. That is the question of the Spirit for your life today. Ask him today to show you and to respond to that direction from the Lord. Father, today we seal this time. In this moment, God, where it's very quiet and it's very, it's a great spot, God, to hear you. So Lord, I pray that you would speak to us, Lord. I pray that maybe we just take a moment as people are dismissed and we would just take a moment to be with you. Lord, we love you, and we, I seal this word, and I pray for a harvest, God, in our lives. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. Would you stand?